All right. Welcome back to the new suit debates, day two, guys. We're have, we have the welfare inequalities officer debate now, um, and we're going to be going until 825 roundabout, so thank you all for bearing with us. For the candidates we've got here, Yasesbi, Badmini Gokale, uh, Alina Ikram couldn't make it today, but we've left an empty podium to symbolize her presence, uh, Elspeth Wilson and Will Rigby. So we've got Emily Kelso moderating and Brianna Gordon, who's the current welfare inequalities officer, co-chairing. Um, so without further ado, take it away. Uh, welcome everyone and good evening. I will reiterate, my name is Emily Kelso, my pronouns are she, her, and I will be chairing this evening's welfare and equality officer debate. Now I'll just give a quick overview of how this debate is going to run. To start with, I will ask all of the candidates to say their name, their pronouns as well, and then they will have one minute and 40 seconds to give a brief overview of their manifesto and their points that they would like to make this evening. No rebuttals will be allowed during this process. Once all of the candidates have made their opening statements, we will then start with the second section of the debate, that is the questions. I will offer most of the questions and we will also take questions from online and we will also take questions from the room as well. Um, uh, these questions that will be posed, some of them will be more broad, at which point we'll go to each candidate for an answer. Some of them will be more targeted, but we will also open these as well. And these, again, will be an equal number. We want to make this as fair a, a process as possible. Each candidate will have one minute to answer a question directly posed at them, and then 40 seconds for a rebuttal and 30 seconds after that. Um, I will quickly go over... Um, just a quick disclaimer and everything of um, the NUTV process. So our priority is to facilitate a fair and democratic election and we believe in freedom of speech and the right of all students to ex express their views. However, we will not toler tolerate harassment or discrimination of any kind. We ask that all, at all times you treat fellow students, colleagues and staff with respect. Anyone displaying rude, aggressive or otherwise inappropriate behaviour within the online chat or in the room will be immediately removed and will be unable to play an active role in this or future debates regarding the 2022 election debates. Now, before I open it to the floor for everyone to begin their statements, I will ask, please speak loudly. Some <laughs> people online haven't been able to hear the last one, so we'd like to hear what you're saying, please. Um, and, and I would just like to mention, because this is... a equality and mental health um, officer debate, we do have some trigger warnings regarding the questions. So we will have questions regarding sexual violence and mental health. So I just want you to bear this in mind before we begin. Now, I would like to start on the left hand side of the room. Is it where? Hello. I'm Miss Aspie. And well, the room's quite empty. I, I, can't, I can't tell but decide if I want to be nervous or not now. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, firstly, Salford, I'd like to thank Brianna for all her work as Welfare and Equality Officer for this year. Um, especially, well, especially when you're trying to win this week. That really inspired me and it opened my eyes to what a welfare officer could do and the change a welfare officer is capable of making. So thank you so much for that. Um, the reason I want to do a be wealth officer is because, well, to be less, to be more, more, most sincere and genuine, I just really care for people, and I really think everyone deserves an equal opportunity to be everything they are, because everyone's unique and beautiful, and I strongly believe this from the bottom of my, bottom of my heart. I'm, I'm just speaking too quickly. From the bottom. <laughs> okay, uh, I believe everyone's equal and beautiful, and deserves deserves a chance to be heard and deserves a spotlight for themselves to show everything they are and be authentically themselves and that is my main motivation to be a wealth officer I've, I mean, uh, I've also been interested in these similar things in the past and I have been the wealth officer of Mind the Gap and the vice president of Mind the Gap before I've also been a peer mentor in uni where I've done, I've provided a safe space for people to be themselves and talk about their feelings and yeah <laughs> did, and just and, and be able to support support them through the proce process of talking about themselves. So that's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to remind you, start with your name, pronouns, and then make your speech. Next candidate, please. <coughs> Greetings, everyone. I am Padmini Gokhale. My pronouns are she and her. And I am studying uh, MRES, mitochondrial biology and medicine. I have, I've, I'm a professional dancer, I play basketball, I have a research paper publication, and I've been a merit student throughout my 
undergrad. Now, thank you so much to Nusu for giving us this opportunity to present our views and our opinions and making us feel like it's, it's a part of a team and we are a part of the team as well. Now, let's talk about these two qualities, equality and welfare. Equality are, the, there's some people who are much more equal than others. So the question to be asked is how, the question to be asked is uh, when and where will be, we, we all will be the most truest and broadest sense of equal as well as welfare. Welfare would be the state of good health, happiness, comfort, and basically good financial health as well. So the most important obstacle for welfare and equality has to be discrimination, unfair treatment, and um, respect not being meted out to each other. The examples of welfare are having food, lodging during the time of, uh, during the time of uh, uh, a severe shortage of food or severe shortage of resources with each other. Um, so here's to Mark as a part of a team, of a part of a Nusu family, for the ideals of objectives, for the ideals and objectives of Nusu, and basically be true to the theme of Vasudaiva Kutumbakam, which means the world is my family. I am your rep, I am your representative, so please come in. Uh, you, you guys are creative, you guys are brilliant, you guys are beautiful, and <laughs> your ideas, I'll do my best to incorporate them and follow it, see it through. Thank you very much. We're going yeah. to have to move on to the next candidate. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Elspeth, my pronouns are she, her, I'm a fourth year psychology student. Um, in my placement year in uh, West London NHS management, I learned what it's like um, providing welfare solutions for diverse communities and I want to bring what I learned in to improve our community and our culture in Newcastle. My three core goals are improving mental health, safety and intersectionality. I believe I'm fit for the role because I have lived experience in mental health problems, menopause, sexual assault at the university and neurodivergence. I believe I will fight for everyone to get the needs met that, so they are able to thrive as a community and as individuals. I want to open up platforms to get student feedback um, and make voices heard to ensure the diversity of the experience at Newcastle is uh, considered. So please vote for me and vote for a change for the better. Thank you very much. Will. Hi, uh, my name is Will Rigby. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, so, as I said before, my name is Will Rigby and as you may have guessed, I am running for the Welfare and Equality Officer at Newcastle University. I am currently the Welfare and Equality Officer for the Classic Society, which is obviously and objectively the best society in the university, but I'm not biased when I say that, so I'll move on. Uh, but through my time in this role, I've had an amazing opportunity to interact with a, a, a real variety of uh, people. From all different backgrounds and experiences, uh, I have taken part in and personally ran uh, many classic society podcasts, which are affectionately named plebcasts, you know, for classics and so on. Um, and these uh, on these podcasts, we've, ta we've tackled topics such as decolonizing the classics, um, uncovering and analyzing strong female characters, and then uh, kind of underlying and unpicking um, problematic male characters that are often very idolized in media uh, and literature and, and film and so on and so forth. Um, I'm, also in, I'm also very familiar with the Earn Your Stars program, which, is in, which focuses on the ensuring that each society is inclusive accessible and transparent. My overall goal, if I were to be elected, is to create a nurturing, inclusive, and empathetic environment in which all students, no matter where they come from, who they are, and what they've been through, feel that they're a part of and that they feel heard. I want to engage in all aspects of the university life, from societies to the lecture halls, to student voicing, etc. And I want to gain a grasp of what really needs to be done in this university and tackle the problems there are. Thank you very much. Now to the second part of the debate, the questions. I'd like to start with this fun icebreaker. What do you offer to the role of welfare and equality officer that other candidates do not? What makes you and your manifesto different? We will start with the other side of the room, Will. Hi, um, I'll just say the elephant in the room. Uh, I'm a straight white guy uh, and I unfortunately, well, no, I, I, I I can't, I won't use it, I won't use it unfortunately, I can't exactly say that I have been through all of the experiences that um, marginalized and uh, minority groups have been through. Um, the only thing, the, my main aspect is I've 
tried my best from my entire life to be as empathetic as possible. Um, and I've, that's been a core aspect of my welfare officer role in, um, in the classic society. I've met up with various people from in the society that come from these minority groups and asked them what they've experienced in the university in general life and what sort of things they um, have been through. So in my manifesto, um, one of my big focuses is on having monthly events where people can voice their experiences uh, either anonymously or publicly um, and hopefully then use this to engage um, and improve the university life in general. Thank you very much. Apologies for putting you on the spot so oh, after you no finish. Elspeth. Um, so I believe the reason that my manifesto is different is through my experience of working in the NHS and seeing operationally how welfare systems are created in this country. Um, the core of the uh, new direction that the NHS is taking is the community mental health framework and I think within our university we could take a huge amount of inspiration about the, this direction that the NHS is taking in terms of um, tackling hard to reach groups, uh, making uh, our welfare service less western focused and decolonizing our uh, welfare service, moving away, uh, away from CBT because for a lot of people it doesn't work. Um, and then I think another thing that makes my manifesto different is my lived experiences uh, from this university of sexual assault, mental health, menopause and neurodivergence and I believe, um, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Thank you very much. Padmini. So some of, in a, some of my ideas and my opinion would be, we'll, we'll start with welfare. So we'll try crossing major hurdles which, uh, which we encounter in accessing basic minimum equality. Then there would be, uh, there, there, there would be equ if you talk about equality, there would be equal opportunities in an equal society. So how, can, how much is it true right now and what can we make of it? There would be intra and interpersonal effectiveness. Look, there, if I assume there would be a window here, but my metaphor depends on that. And uh, like if you, for example, even if you just look out of a window or if you look out of uh, at a different place, do you see what I see? And uh, if, uh, effectively, um, equality is, is you, do you have an effective giving strategy or where you can learn something more and by getting even more involved? So there are three ways in which I would um, uh, basically concentrate on these. Is the first one would be they'll say they'll tuck is what I concentrate on, which is a term which is heart to heart. And I would be continuing this in the closing statements. Thank you very much. Yusefzi. My heart. That's all I've got to pick is my manifesto is full of holes and I acknowledge that as I wrote it. But then I have this will to make life better for everyone around me because life isn't the best. Life's always out to get us sometimes and sometimes we're always going through pits of darkness and it just feels like we're lost and there's no one there. So I want to give people everything I can, give myself to this concept and because I strongly believe in it, I strongly believe in this ideal that everyone needs to live a very happy, free life and be able to express themselves in the most authentic sense of self. And I do anything to ensure that. That is all I've, I've got off from my manifesto. That's different, I guess. Thank you very much. Now, does anyone have any points they would like to rebut or make or, uh, against any other points? Or shall I just move on? I'll just move on then. Another question for everyone. The scope of the welfare and equality officer role is incredibly large, and you will represent various marginalized groups that you may not be a part of. How will you cater to the needs of a diverse range of students? And I will choose Padmini to start this question. Yes. Um, it's a very intricate question. Thank you for asking that. And uh, um, I believe that we not being part of it is the exact way we can include everyone and increase inclusivity as well. Uh, I believe. It's, it's more of everyone will have differences, yes? It's, it's what I believe. Everyone has been groomed differently. There's a different environment, different opportunities. They will exist. So that will be the major challenge of uh, bringing us all together. So I follow uh, something called one in many and many in one, which would be a concept which would bring all of us together. And this is the exact platform where everything would be showcased quite equally. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will move to Yusefsi. Um, can you please repeat the question again? Absolutely. The scope of the welfare and equality officer role is incredibly large and you will need to represent various marginalized groups that you may not necessarily be a part of. How will you cater to the, to the, diverse, to the, need, to the needs of a diverse range of students? 
actively listening to them and actively trying to understand uh, and, and adapt to structures I'm not familiar with. As Pudmini said, people grow up in different climates and different situations and they're not necessarily the same as us. Subjective reality do is a real thing. So the way we can understand each other and grow together as as a community and as people is by actively listening to each other, effective communication and understanding. And if I was in the position of wealth officer, I'd be I'd have my feet on the ground and ask questions, a lot of questions and listen to people. And that's how I'd move forward with the, with the idea, yeah. So. Thank you very much. Elspeth? Um, so I think it's important that um, within the position that none, whoever gets elected doesn't project their own experiences to the whole cohort. Um, we can't use a blanket approach across one marginalised group, even within the realm of mental health. You know, one person with mental health will have a completely different experience. Um, everyone has unique experiences, and intersecting identities really amplify this. So we do need to consider how a disabled queer person would experience the university differently to other marginalised groups. Um, and people are multifaceted and have their own stories, so I think it's important to really listen to unique experiences and take them as unique experiences and not... Um, treating people as a representative for their marginalised group. Um, you know, people shouldn't have to be a spokesperson for their whole identity and we shouldn't reduce someone down to their identity. Um, so I think it's important to talk to the liberation officers and get the feedback that they're getting, continue running surveys, focus groups and use the existing EDI networks that we already have to get as much information as we can. Thank you very much. Will? Excellent points. I, yeah, I, I can definitely see myself agreeing with all of those, really. Um, I think, yeah, surveys is definitely a really important um, way of getting an idea of what people are going through, what things need to be changed, uh, what things can be improved upon. Um, the good thing with surveys is everyone can do them. Uh, they're very inclusive. You can do them in email um, and they're very accessible. Working with um, societies such as uh, Mind the Gap, um, it's an excellent resource, um, getting an idea about what troubles different people's experiences. And as you said, Elspeth, um, get, talking to as many people as possible is the best way about get, going about doing that. And being accessible, signposting these events, um, hosting possibly online, in-person events is another great, another key way to get make sure people feel included and their voices heard. So those are the, those are the main facets, I would say. Thank you very much. Now, before I pass over to an audience question, would anyone like to make a comment on another candidate's statement? No? You're no. just going with your own thing? <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Right, Muslim. Right, then we're going to go to audience questions. Does anyone in this audience have a question? <laughs> just one. Here you go, Kaylee. Hello. Um, I was just thinking about how when, um, I know I've seen Brianna before uh, when we did coverage of Reclaim the Night, and that was something I was really happy to write up. I know Brianna's a welfare officer was very involved in that. So as candidates, do you guys have any specific ideas how you can involve student media to get involved with you know, your campaigns? I know, Will, you just mentioned about something like be things being signposted. Do you have any ideas how you can make things, obviously without triggering some people, make things accessible, get the word out there for things you would organise? So just to briefly summarise Kaylee's question, do you have any plans for relationships with, with um, student media, things like that? And I will choose Elspeth to start. Um, I will admit I'm having a bit of a menopause brain fog moment. Would um, you like me to come back to you in a yes second? <laughs> yes, Evsi. Oh, can you come back to me too? <laughs> it's a debate you're going to have to answer eventually. I will go to Will. Uh, yes. Um, my initial plans were to be podcasts, which would be, I think would be a good way of... Um, it's, it's multifaceted in terms of um, it's good for the university, it's also good for the particular person getting involved. It's you know, a good thing to put on their CV in a, more, in a less, somewhat less altruistic way, I guess. But it's a good way of um, understanding student voice. Um, with student media, um, I think I've worked with... Um, Ashna and Castor, who both write, who both write on the, the newspaper, and they, you know, it's a very accessible, very easy to understand format. So I would love to work with um, with student media, and yeah, using gender neutral pronouns is is a good way of um, making sure things are inclusive. Maybe not throwing in scary language that might trigger certain people. Trying to be getting the point across easily, but not exactly saying it exactly. Um, but yeah, that, those are kind of those, those two key ideas probably be a really, would be a good way to start. I'd say. 
Thank you very much. I'll now go back to Elspeth. Um, so I think, yeah, regarding like trigger warnings and things, I think, um, you know, social the um, student social media and things are probably what reaches the most students. So using that to signpost to the more conventional student media. Um, and again, I agree with uh, using gender neutral pronouns until you have con confirmation of someone's pronouns. Um, also, <laughs> I agree with the podcast. Um, one thing that hasn't come to fruition yet is the School of Psychology EDI podcast that I've been helping out on. Um, and I did an episode on uh, the gender pain bias in healthcare. Um, so again, it means that you can come to the information if you want to, um, rather than just seeing it on your social media and just being really uh, flustered by it. So I think trigger warnings and signposting out so that it's not the first thing people see and they, they have some control over it. Thank you very much. I will now go to you, Um Off the top of my head, I could think of, uh, to involve student media, maybe like the TV and even even the career and the, the radio, which I, I'm also part of the radio myself. Well, off the top of my head, because I have a radio show myself, which plays email music, which and I talk about how it can help us understand ourselves and feel feel emotions that we sometimes suppress. So maybe music shows that help people, that un unlock people's, because music therapy is a thing, and so sometimes music helps people be an authentic version of themselves, or, or in terms, I mean, that's, I'm running out of ideas. I think that's all I've have got to offer for now. Thank you very much, and I would like to go to Padmini to finish. So when we talk about triggers, I, I do believe everyone um, undergoes uh, through a lot of things. Everyone is still undergoing through a lot of things. And we would have um, we would have so many workshops and programs and activities which would target these specifically. There would be, uh, we, would have, we would have to understand ourselves and others better. There would be a better you creation. Understand the whys and the hows of us, of everyone else together, where, where we could enmesh and integrate better. And I feel like understanding is, is the shortest distance between two people. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just one coffee away, it's just one pizza away. It's, it's, um, it, it, it could be anything. So now I'm, I'm glad it's virtual, so it, it's, it could reach out to much more of people. And um, um, it's, uh, it's something which binds us together. And uh, it, this is where we utilize all our resources, which would include student media. Uh, officers as well and all the other officers and uh, it, it's a wonderful opportunity to bring all of us together and make the best use of uh, reaching people and creating awareness about sensitivity issues and multicultural mannerisms surrounding it. Thanks. Thank you very much. We're going to go back to our uh, normal schedule of questions. <laughs> so this one is directed at will, but afterwards I will open it to the other candidates should they wish to make a statement. Now, you make a point about the mental health services we have here at Newcastle University. The reality is that mental health services across the country, including our own, are over capacity are un and under-resourced. You mention mental health in your manifestos, and you, you will, in particular, you say that you would work closely to, include, to improve student mental health programs and counselling. What specific programs and counselling are you referring to here and how would you overcome barriers such as funding and resources to improve student mental health? It's a great question, it's a great question. Uh, yes, um, in terms of counselling, um, I think there are plenty of opportunities um, for both person-to-person -person counselling and also somewhat more abstract counselling. Uh, I know that some people don't prefer, I would prefer things like volunteering in a charity shop or working in gardens or um, working with guide dogs and so forth. Um, I think in terms of uh, bolstering, so I particularly talked about bolstering Nightline, I think it's a, it's a great service, it's unfortunate obviously that we have to have a service like that, um, but ex hopefully expanding the amount of volunteers, uh, I think volunteering is going to be uh, a key part and trying to advertise um, the ways that it can benefit not only the university but the particular students, getting them involved is going to be um, and trying to advertise the ways that that can help is, a, is going to be a key part of making sure that um, as you say the resources are unfortunately not there so include volunteers is going to be a key part of that. Thank you very much. Do any other candidates have a comment they would like to make on this particular topic? Um, so I would argue that 
it would be a better allocation of funds to not um, essentially recruit more unpaid labor from students. I think it would be better allocating to paid expert staff to provide the support rather than, because Nightline is not a crisis line, it's a listening service, it's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the money should be spent on paid staff rather than putting the emphasis on the students. What kind of paid stuff in terms of what kind of jobs? Just I mean, I think the issue with with it all is changing the priorities for the work, their well-being service. Mm -hmm. Too many people think that they need counselling when actually there's so many other options that we could start offering. Okay. Um, and then that way it opens up the spaces for the people that do need to have traditional staff. Very good point. I Very would like point. to remind candidates that if you have a comment on another candidate's comments, then please raise your hand and then I will come to you. Okay. Padmini, Yusefsi, do you have any comments you would like to make? Yes. Uh, Yusefsi, you raise your hand first, I'll go to you, and then I will go to you, Padmini. Yusefsi. Just to add to the discussion, and, and just to add a point to consider, do you feel that maybe stuff like mindfulness or workshops of that, that sort would be any use to help the issue? Help the issue of of people needing mental health services? Um, I think there's, that is definitely one facet of it. Um, in terms of mental health services, you can have, obviously there's the wide range of how, uh, there's, there's obviously there's crisis, there's crisis services, and there's more, like, as like Nightline is, it's more like a talking service. Um, I think workshops in general, from what I've taught to from, diff uh, from different societies, it does appear to be that workshops, sometimes giving back to communities like volunteering, for example, can make people feel better about themselves and that can be a more abstract way of going about helping people's mental health. Yeah. Well, thank you. No worries. Thank you very much. I will go to Padmini now if you would like to continue. It's, it's a very small point which I would like to add to it. Mental health is, is an extremely uh, trippy, uh, tricky topic and uh, the only way to, I, I feel, the only way to reduce the stigma is to talk about it more, have mm. more conversations, be much more open about it. Just. Uh, communicate much much more better i feel like there, there should be a community based healing so this might, I mean, it, it might look individualistic but it affects the community and we would have activities and workshops directed as per and we'll we'll frame it the way the person wants it to be uh, we will make that person much more comfortable and uh, proceed with it yes. thank you thank you very much now this next question it's again it's aimed towards elspeth but I will invite other candidates to make comments. Now, Elspeth, in your manifesto, you mentioned working with It Happens Here to tackle misogyny in Newcastle. How would you approach tackling misogyny? Do you have any specific plans of what this would entail? Um, so I think firstly, this would start with the other part of my manifesto, which is introducing domestic violence uh, training, uh, as it can happen to anyone, but um, predominantly women. Um, and working with it happens here i think it would be boosting visibility boosting funding and resources in any way i can um, i have spoken to the president of it happens here and i'm aware of their data collection for the do better newcastle campaign and i think it's just improving the visibility of that ensuring that everyone knows what's happening and it's making sure newcastle is accountable for the sexual assaults that happen on campus and we we do need to do better um so mainly visibility and putting as much funding in as I am able to do so. Thank you very much. Do any other candidates have a comment they would like to make on this? No? no. Um, Muslim, do we open it to the floor again? Yes. My glamorous assistant. All right, guys, we've, anyone has questions? We've got three. I'm going to go over Harris first, though, you know, because uh, he asked first. My question, uh, I have several, but my first one I'll ask at the moment uh, is directed towards, yeah, is directed um, uh, towards Elspeth. So you mentioned in your manifesto about wanting to improve intersectionality by working with liberation officers to run focus groups um, with the aim of improving mental health and safeguarding uh, specifically. Um, liberation officers, as I was a former one myself, often find it extremely difficult to get enough engagement to run these groups. In fact, even NUSU organizationally, when it runs its EDI sessions, struggles. I've attended a few of them, and it's usually about two or three people, which is not at all a diverse or comprehensive um, 
uh, a group of people to, to, to ask. So what are you going to attempt that's different from what already has been tried over the years? Um, yeah, I think that's a really good question. Even within the EDI psychology department, um, we only had like two people attending and I wasn't able to attend the session that was most recent, so they are having to uh, repeat it. I think it's so difficult because students don't want to complain and they don't want to feel like they're complaining and I think it's reminding students that this is them having the opportunity to make things better and um, that they're not going to be in trouble for having any complaints. Um, I think potentially offering some kind of incentive for attendance um, but yeah it's it's a it's a really tricky tricky issue is trying to get engagement up um, yeah <laughs> I'm sorry thank you very much does anyone else have any comments they would like to make about the topic of um, encouraging engagement with the student body on these kind of issues maybe do a better job in highlighting the importance of setting the issue and talking about why it might matter not only to the person but also to people directly responsible and related to people and how it might influence a society because the more we learn about stuff like this the more we can actually be of, be, be of service to more people not just someone we directly know or are related to so the more we tell people why a certain aspect of mental health is important to even educate yourself about not necessarily self worth it would be a start, I guess. Okay. Does anyone else have any comments they would like to make, or shall I move on? Before I begin, I would just like to remind everyone to please speak up, because we, we're here because of you, basically. So speak up. We want to hear what you're saying. Now, this particular question is aimed at Padmimi. Padmimi. Now, and obviously afterwards, you are allowed to make a comment. As Welfare and Equality Officer, you will spend much time working on changing cultures, attitudes and beliefs. This requires support from academic and university staff who may disagree with your stance. Padmini. Padmini. In your manifesto, you focus heavily on teamwork, but in many instances you will have to face opposition alone. How will you navigate resistance and ensure support from staff? Okay. Opposition... Um is, is a very important part in arriving at decisions which are good and which, which we find a good balance in. It's, it's something which is required in every committee, every part of life, everywhere, where exactly, because this in itself is a, is a debate, is, is what I would feel, where we would be able to rebuttal, where we would be able to go against each other and maybe reach the best of, uh, I mean, filter out the best of points and uh, find out common ground. And uh, if there's opposition from any particular staff, university, maybe we could find a win-win situation for all of us. We could talk to them, we could discuss more, we could communicate better, we could learn how to um, uh, put our ideas and goals and uh, everything in, uh, in, in, in a better format and work on it even more. Yes. Thank you very much. Now, does anyone else have a comment to make regarding cooperation and working potentially against resistance. Yusefzi? Well, oh well, in my experience dealing with op opposition, I strongly believe that every time someone opposes you, it's a chance to learn more about yourself and a chance to understand where they're coming from because they might have a point because they've lived a completely different life and their experiences have taught them to behave in a certain way and you, you're bringing a point which they're not used to. So. If, if we just listen to what they're, where they're coming from, not just the opposition in itself, but the root of root that's motivating them to oppose you in the first place, understand where that's coming from, we can reach a common ground where it would be helpful. As Padmini said earlier, that's how we grow together as people, because uh, opposition is a necessary element for growth. Thank you very much. Now, I'd like to go with another question, and this will be the question that is directed at Yusefsi. In your manifesto, you write about providing a safe space to report issues anonymously or in person. Are you aware that the Students' Union and the university already provide this service? So what is it that you want to achieve? Well, it did. And while doing my research for, for this debate, I realised that the university does a very good job at doing that. And I can't comment on... The, I mean, I've, I've, been, I've used the nooses, well, the nooses service myself before. 
And what I've noticed is, well, I, I, maybe this could be more like an improvement to it than just, than just, than just be like, yeah, let's change this. No, this this would be an improvement to what's already existing. That, as in, the form in itself hasn't got a dialogue box or like anything to add a prompt in, anything to just describe the issue in, in, and to just tell people what is it that's going on. It's just a checklist of information there. And I thought I could add that to that, to just make it better. And you know. Another thing I've noticed in the in Nusu's website, which provides a lot of very useful, so very useful welfare tips, is that it doesn't really comfort anyone who goes there. It just tells people about their services, and that's kind of what I want to improve on. Thank you very much. Now, does anyone else have any comments that they would like to make on this question? I mean, I would argue that the university report and support system is not doing enough. Um, having gone through it myself. Um, I think there's not enough information at the front end about how the process even works and what's going to happen. Um, it feels like you're opening a door without even knowing what's on the other side. It is terrifying um, to suddenly be sent an email and not really be sure who it's from, not really be sure why it's happening. So much more visibility needs to happen at the front end about how it's going to happen. And <laughs> sorry, menopause brain fog. Um, yeah, it's, it's just not sufficient, is my point. What would you propose in its place? What would you change about this system or try to change if you were to succeed in this election? I think we need more information at the beginning. I think we need to say who you would be contacted by. I think you need potentially a draft copy of what messages you might receive so you can see what it would look like. You need to know who you're going to see, when you're going to see them, roughly in the timeline. It, it just needs to, you need to know what it's going to look like because I was in meetings with people. I had no idea who they were. It was absolutely terrifying. I was by myself and there was no information. I was just going through this process. It, it all needs to be, to be information at the beginning. Before you even report, you need to know what's going to happen. Thank you very much. Um, doesn't seem like anyone wants to make any comments. So I will move to the next question that my co-chair would like to ask. Um, yeah, just following on from the last question, in terms of reporting mechanisms, how would you increase the awareness of this for students and increase student confidence? So I know you've already kind of answered this, but yeah. Um, again, I think we need to get it on you know, all the student communications, the emails, the social media, just reminding students that it is an option. And I think um, societies need to be much more vocal, actively vocal about it, and just reminding students that it's a thing. Um, yeah, it's just communication and visibility is the main thing, um, on top of what I've already said. Can I just add to that saying it could be it could be incorporated into the induction week of of uni in general. Just everyone just at the start of the year just has a lecture on it maybe, and they know that this is a thing. This is pe where people can offer. Because I've had I've faced some of the things as well for of of mind the gap. I run peer support sessions, but then not enough people know about it's even being there in the first place to help them and it's a good way to start off by you know even if it's a shout out in lectures so it is already in the induction process and it is with our NUSU training for societies as well just to add to the term of reference uh will you'd like to make a point uh yeah no, i was just gonna uh, to answer the question um i've spoken to Ola thomas who is the uh, head of the student voice program for the A A A H so H A double S uh, program, which is part of the uh, humanitarian uh, school of, of this university, and signposting tends to be one of the biggest concerns. Not enough people know about where to go, what kind of people to be talking to, and it, it can be somewhat of an intimidating process. So, yeah, emails uh, working. Clo I would work closely with various societies. Most people are in societies, and if they aren't. Uh, during um, possibly during before so um, yeah before and after lectures, um, they could have um, notice boards, reminding students through emails, through Instagram posts, through Facebook that there are plenty of services they can go to to discuss uh, any issues they have. Thank you very much. Um, before I open it to the floor, it's just you all definitely recognise that communication is key, and yet none of you particularly mentioned the role of student media in your manifesto. So. A point to keep in mind. Now, I would like to open it to the floor. Muslim, my man, what have we got? Uh, uh, <laughs> so who's got questions for us? I know, I know we'll come back to you later, but I know you guys 
Western corner. Uh, um, yeah, sure. Um, hi everyone. I I just wanted to say um, that going on stuff that was raised earlier about like other ways, alternatives to therapy. I was wondering if there was a way of like mentioning societies and like because I know bacon helps a lot with my mental health, for example. Mm. And I was wondering if there was a way of trying to like highlight societies, like creative societies, which might help with other students' mental health. Yeah. Um, I would like Yusevsi to start that question, please. Unless it was aimed, it doesn't seem to be named at anyone in particular. So Yusevsi, can you start that one, please? I'm sorry. I, I, can, I, can the question please be repeated? I just spaced out a little bit. Uh, yes, I'll re repeat the question for you. Um, Please correct me if I'm wrong, Joseph. Um, what, what are you going to do with societies in order to raise awareness of how societies can help with mental health? So this was a question that I wanted to raise myself. Most of you have come from society backgrounds, and yet in your manifestos, not many of you talk about working, continuing to work with societies. So here's your chance. What are you going to do with societies as your role as welfare and equality officer? Well, maybe start, I mean, well, the societies in themselves already got welfare officers and we can make, we, well. Yes, and I. welfare and equality officer, you will issue guidance towards them. So you need to have a good working relationship with them. I yes, speak as a an welfare officer myself. Yes, just getting to that. Um, more active, well, I'd, I'd try engaging societies more like just giving them more information as to what, they could do to ensure well-being even ideas like that take their mind off them not not necessarily the hard topics like talk about like therapy or whatever but s simple stuff like taking their mind off stuff creative projects or or just movie night or ca cafe stuff like that just to take the edge off a bit because sometimes people just need to relax and chill and then start over again so that'd be like the first step because not everyone directly wants to talk about the hard things in life people take time to open up Thank you, uh, Padmini. P Padmini, I apologise. Padmini. Yeah. Um, so I find m I myself, for example, uh, we see that there are so many different uh, we, uh, so many different likings we used to have or hobbies we, we used to have. We outgrow them. We we change. We we can uh, we 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 start liking something else. And uh, it, it does matter because mental health plays a very important role in all of this. And uh, we could direct, we could direct, we could get all these societies to enmesh together, maybe share opportunities equally and divide it really well and uh, offer something which, uh, wants, which is exclusively uh, to the, for the individual and maybe make the process much more comfortable and uh, relatable and resonate something at a much higher level and work on it. Thank you very much. I'll move to Elspeth. Um, yeah, so this is actually part of what is in the community mental health framework that the NHS is starting to implement. So CBT and counselling don't work for everyone, particularly neurodivergent people don't do well with CBT. So it's trying to, and especially um, other cultures are very stigmatising against mental health, so they don't want to go into therapy. So what I would love to do is widen the participation bursary. Um, so if students are going through mental health problems, they can be re reimbursed to join societies that may be beneficial to their mental health and um, <laughs> um, yeah I'm sorry brain fog again thank you I will move on to Will uh, yes um, I said as I said before um, not yeah counseling is not for everyone so having things like baking is an excellent way of uh, getting people involved you know, working with societies as a whole uh, getting student media involved um, and again, signposting is key. Uh, getting societies involved. Um, every society has a welfare officer, and from my experience, I've been to, I've been to the welfare officer training, I've been to the welfare officer programs, and not a lot of people go. Having incentives like, I, as I said, like a bursary or encouraging things like earn your stars, where people can actually gain a financial reward for taking part in these programs. You know, it doesn't just have to be societies focused on mental health and equality. It can be every society. You know, classics, for example. You know, it's not necessarily a society you'd think would be inclusive, but we are so focused, and that is down to what I have done, as well as other welfare officers before me, and to ensure that you know there are no cliques, there are no um, barriers to entry, and just making sure that all societies work together. Big happy family. Thank you very much, um, Muslim. The second question. Yeah, we're gonna go back now. <laughs> Man, so. Hello, so 
A question I have for everyone um, here is, is that um, one one major barrier to student welfare is the multitude of limitations which are put on on international students, such as not being able to work more than twenty hours, as well as the the eighty percent requirement for attendance. What would you do to end that system? Thank you very much, Elizabeth. I will go to Elsbeth to start that question. Um, so from my understanding, a lot of those requirements for international students come from their visa requirements. So I guess part of it would be to lobby higher up to end those requirements or reduce them. Um, and I think, you know, offering specific things within the welfare service to address that stress um, and probably considering adjustments within the PEC system as well um, to allow for that stress um, and perhaps give um, extensions to assignments and things to accommodate for that. Mm. Thank you very much. I'd like to go to Padmini next. So, um, th what we could do, um, I, I believe, is, is, is a very nice point, is uh, we could try getting through it to the people who have the authority to uh, maybe accord the same kind of rules and uh, uh, the same equal level uh, and bring it at a le level which uh, works for everyone, uh, has a much better uh, understanding level and uh, accommodates international students better because I feel I believe um, we, we are more more or less global citizens and it, it really uh, makes difference to the university to us and uh, to everyone involved Thanks. thank you very much I would like to go to will next uh, yes um, it's not an area that I am particularly um, familiar with but I would definitely like to if it's, if it's an issue um, that has been raised I would love to get involved with it um, possibly talking to international societies asking them what sort of activities they do to um, get ensure that all their members are able to get involved um, in terms of when it comes to the higher ups I don't know how much uh, I could do all I could and I would try my best to, vote, to campaign for that but I don't know exactly how much I could personally change in that role um, but again, asking questions, um, working uh, with different events and different organisers would be a good way of engaging what sort of things can be done within the limitations, uh, and then building on from that. Uh, having, you know, everyone, international students, we're all citizens of Newcastle University. Trying to make sure that everyone is included is the goal primarily. Thank you very much, and I will end with Yusebsi. Well, we. We live in a world where <laughs> these these things aren't necessarily in, in our hands. Like, as you said, the visa requirements are, and and the twenty hour work week is nothing a welfare officer could control on a university level. It's it could only work by you know collective campaigning by multiple students, but it's not something one person could change. And unfortunately, at at at, at the I mean at the present moment, it's not easy to just end that policy. But then. What could be done instead is comfort the students that are go through that, go, go through those phases because it is difficult. As an international student my, myself, it was very stressful in the first year to, to end everything and be a part of students and make friends with everyone at the same time. It was it was a daunting experience. So, societies, uh, societies and uh, societies and clubs could be taught how to be more inclusive, and uh, cater to uh, and uh, give people creative outlets to be themselves better. Thank you very much. Now we've got time Sorry. for one more question before we'll move to closing remarks. Um, so the past year has really shone a spotlight on sexual violence and women's safety, um, but only one of you mentioned it in your manifesto. So I want to ask why is that and how will you proactively and practically tackle sexual violence on our campus? Sorry, that's a bit of a hard one for the end. Uh, no, it's an, it's an important question, as you say. Um, it is definitely uh, a rising concern. Um, you know, uh, rapes reported in the Northeast hospitals have sort of 122% as of um, 
2019, I believe. Um, and it's an important topic to tackle. Um, I think from my experience, um, from the, my, in my freshers' week, the introductory lectures were okay, but it was putting a lot of onus on the women. There was not so much tackling the root cause, which tends to be, which is for 90, I'd say 95% of cases, 90% of cases is men. Um, so there are obviously things we can do. So having in like uh, working with different clubs, bars, making sure that they have drug testing kits, making sure bouncers have proper training. Uh, also in our NUSU student bar, uh, I'm providing um, different workshops such as surviving training, uh, self-defense, so on and so forth. Uh, thank you. I would like to move on to Elspeth. Um, yeah, so as I've already said, domestic violence training incorporated into uh, the committee's training. I would also love to um, <laughs> um, Im improve the visibility and accessibility of resources for survivors um, and bring in an in-house domestic violence expert into our student um, advice service. Um, beyond s support for survivors um, themselves, I would agree with everything that um, was previously said about um, working with bars and clubs, um, ensuring we tackle the root cause of the problem. And a lot of the issue is that the consent training that we provide for committees is just not enough. Having gone through an assault months prior and sitting through that consent training, it was insulting how lack of nuance it is. It needs to be so much more in depth. We need to tackle the root of the problem. And so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to go to Yusef C next. Well, to start off with, again, as Elspeth said, it should start the route, and that should, everyone should be re educated on restraint first. Understand, understand that you can't just do whatever to other people, and, and teach yourself how to control your your urges and stuff like that. To start off with, telling people, essentially send them, send them back to school. It is a very sordid state of society that we live in, that people need to go back to school and learn all these things from the beginning. Be like, no, you can't do it. Let, understand what, un understand other people's perspectives and learn not to, I mean, learn how to exercise caution and restraint and know what consent is. In some cases, people just don't get it. No means no, get the hint, move on. And then start off with, start off with self-defense classes and drug testing kits, and as they've said already, so that's about it. Anything as I continue to say, we'll just add on to that point. So that's it. I've got to say. Padmini. Yes. Sexual violence is is something which um, is based on a lot of triggers and is is something which uh, which is the causes are. Um, more so based on the stereotypical or society's biases, which we need to work on to uh, change. There are, there's a lot of relearning, uh, unlearning, and relearning processes which are involved again. There are a lot of biases need to, which need to be targeted. There, uh, there's, there's a lot of scope for a lot of uh, growth. And um, all of these people need to be educated. Well, we, we would have to increase all our awareness uh, protocols and mechanisms and reach out to as many more people as we can and make sure that they apply it in their life and uh, not um, not do just the 50% of it. Maybe we, we would have gender equality workshops, go 50-50 and uh, proceed on the same level. Thank you very much. I would like to now end the debate section. End the debate section? End the question section of the debate. Good grief, it's been a long evening. And I would li now like to move to the closing remarks section of this debate. Now, you will have a minute. There will be no rebuttals. It's just a clear cut. Make your closing statement, then move on, and then we will end the debate. Yusefsi, you go first. <coughs> well, there's obviously so much more to student welfare and student well-being in addition to everything that's already been spoken and everything I've said, because there is no blanket approach. There's no one size fits all. It's not a sock. Everyone needs to be listened to individualistically and everyone must be treated as their own unique person because the world's full of so many personalities and this, uh, and I, I acknowledge that and I respect that everyone's different and I'd listen to people actively and adapt my my own structure and actively relearn everything I have to learn and have my feet on the ground always asking people questions how I can help them better if I were, were to be elected to this role and yeah essentially just not sit in my office and just ask people all the all the all the hard questions all the time and 
and adapt my strategies and strategies to give people the best student experience they could possibly have. And yeah, that's it. That's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. I'd like to move to Padmini. So, welfare and equality as a post, it's, it's, I will be here as your friend, I'll be here as your associate, I'll be here, I'll be available, I'll be completely dependent and uh, dependable as well. Um, we would have so many workshops, activities, programs, we'll have one major, one minor, one every month. And um, I feel like we should all make it memorable together. There should be, um, it, it, it only works if you're all together and that is what we are basically striving for it to be. And uh, I would just say that please do vote for me and follow the Instagram account as well. And uh, just thanks, thank you for all these precious minutes and end it with some three words which I believe our world revolves around. Uh, one is understand, the second is interact, and the third is evolve. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'd like to move to Elspeth. Um, so please vote for me for better safety, intersectionality and mental health. I believe I'm the best fit for the role because I have a mix of lived and work experience within the NHS and the university. I want to use this year to make big changes and ensure that our community blossoms. So better training for Newcastle to be safer, better accountability for reporting hate crimes, better inclusion. That is the core of my manifesto. Thanks for listening to me and please vote for me. Short and sweet. Thank you very much. And Will, to finish please. Thank you. Um, thank you all for um, listening to what I've had to say. Hopefully, I have demonstrated to you all why I'd be a suitable and strong candidate for this role and improve the welfare and equality for both current and future, stu uh, future, future students of this uh, fantastic establishment. Um, I would also like to thank you all for taking time out of your lives to come to this debate. It, you know, it's, it's a lot, you know, there's a lot of work going on at the moment, so I do really appreciate it. And um, I'd also like to thank my fellow candidates. Uh, this campaign, whilst it's empowering and important, it is stressful and arduous. It requires a lot of uh, fortitude and determination to continue with not just this campaign, uh, but also university life and everything that happens. Um, everyone here has put a lot of effort in and I've thoroughly enjoyed all of your campaigns. I think you should all be extremely proud of yourselves and I would be more than happy to work with you all in the future and I wish you all the best. That being said, it is unfortunately this kind of debate that I would wish you all vote for me. William would be number one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before I formally end the debate, I would like to pass the microphone to the current Welfare and Equality Officer for a final few words. Yeah, I just want to say congratulations to you all because you got through the debate. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much. It was great to hear from you and good luck in all of your campaigns. And with that, the debate is over. We can all go to bed. So again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in into day two of the student me of the new suit debates. We've got the activities in the athletic union officer debates tomorrow, same time, same place. Please come through. Thank you for coming. Good night. Bye bye. <laughs>